Good afternoon. Um, it's a bit of a murky Sunday today. Not that you really mind. Um, if you're sat watching me, you're probably not outside anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, how's everyone doing? Um, thank you to anybody who messaged me um, either on Thursday or Friday. Hi, Becca. Um, yes, uh, the, the, the shootings in Plymouth was horrific, is horrific, um, absolutely awful. Um, I live less than, than a mile from where it, where it happened, but thankfully I hadn't gone to Lidl that evening. Um, I'd come straight home from the gym, so I was safe indoors and missed all the hoo-ha, um, obviously. Um, caught it on the news and things like that later, but managed to not be involved in any way, shape or form, so that was good. Um, but obviously, you know, five people have lost their lives. Um, well, six people lost their lives if you count the shooter, but we don't. He's a git, irrelevant. Um, yeah. So Maxine Davidson, Sophie Martin, Lee Martin, Stephen Washington and Kate Shepherd. Those are the names we need to remember and the families that we need to support and friends. Um, so, yes bit of a sad one this week. Um, hi mum, I have two people watching, my mum and my sister, yay! <laughs> Make it a family thing. Um, today's live, um, I haven't got a lot to tell you, oh yes I have actually, the new bike, I have the new bike, um, I love my new bike, I have unfortunately already dropped it. Um, it's my old scooter, you could put your legs between where the front handlebars are and the seat, um, nice, nice um, dip in between, so you don't have to lift your leg particularly high. But the new one has got um, it, it's got a bit that sits in between those, um, so you've got to lift your leg up higher. And as I was getting off my bike on Friday morning, I unbalanced, and uh, unfortunately, the bike and I went onto the ground. Um, the bike is really heavy to pick back up, especially because as I toppled, um, thank you. Um, that was my sister saying, we'll always be here for you. Um, as I toppled, I tensed all of the muscles in my left leg um, to protect myself and to try and stop it from falling. Um, failed miserably and all of the muscles in my left leg really really hurt i've put scratches on my brand new bike which i'm really annoyed about um hubby has managed to buff those out a bit um but it's one of those things you know it was nice and shiny and new and now it's not quite so nice and shiny and new anymore um but it is amazing and it goes a lot faster than the old one um i feel a lot safer on it on like the parkway in plymouth um and you know going over the bridge and things like that it's a lot it's a lot more um stable and uh better to keep up with the traffic so i'm not fearful that i'm holding people up and i'm gonna cause an accident so that's good um yes so i have my new bike um excellent it's really good really love it very happy very annoyed that i dropped it but that's it is what it is um i've been swimming this morning um did 1.3 kilometers um so that's good um it did hurt, but it eased up as I was uh, as I was swimming, so uh, not too bad. I'm just going to try and bring my video up. There we go. Ooh. And put the comments on there. That's good. Still only mum and sister. Oh well, never mind. It is just a fa us, a family affair, as it were. Um, I'm today's live i've decided um i had a couple of messages on my from my youtube channel i do have a youtube channel it's not very active i supposed to have uploaded everything from um all of my lives haven't done that because i am useless um but one of the videos that i posted absolutely ages ago was a video um on how to use the crafters companion um what do they call it I don't know what the name of the board is, but it um, makes a Christmas cracker on one side. That one. And uh, I had a couple of messages, both in the same week, that said, can you do a tutorial for what's on the other side? Which is that. 
which looks a bit weird. Um, but I thought, I never have any idea what I'm going to do. And somebody's actually asked me to do something. Um, so I thought, we'll have a go at that today. So, um, yeah, as I don't have any other news, I'm still watching um, Prodigal Son. Uh, unfortunately, I thought all of Series 2 was on um, catch up already, but it isn't. So I'm having to watch them slow time now. Don't put yourself down. You are never useless. Did I call myself useless? Oh, well, never mind. I probably am most of the time. Um, yeah, just depends what you need. <laughs> um, right. So I'll put you on the overhead and we will have a play um, and a bit of a chat. That's if anybody else shows up at the moment. It's only showing that there's one person watching. Um, Alison came over this morning. I've managed to offload a whole load of my craft dies that I had in a box for absolutely ages. Don't use them. Um, and I'm, I'd kind of like kept them for Alison because I knew she was trying to get back into card making. Um, so I've managed to offload a whole load of those, a couple of stamps and things like that. So that was really good. Um, and it was so lovely to catch up with Alison. I haven't seen her for donkey's years um don't even know she's seen the new kitchen um she has now obviously we sat and had a coffee at the breakfast bar well i had coffee she had a diet coke um yeah it was absolutely lovely to catch up with her um and uh, just put the world to rights well try to anyway you know what it's like um can't actually solve anything but we know what the issues are <laughs> um yeah won't say what they are right okay on the overhead. Sorry, I'll stop waffling now. Right, bear with. Okay, give us a moment while I try and um, get the camera in the right place. So this video, um, I will definitely be trying to post to YouTube. Right, let's have a look and see if that's all right. Sorry, I just need to wait for my iPad to catch up so that I can see whether I've got it in the right place. Okay, not too much of my tum in view or my boobs. They tend to get in the way. Um, right, so this is the um, panel we are going to be using, which is um, the other side of the cracker. It's one of the Christmas boards that Crafters Companion brought out a good few years ago now, probably about five years at least. Um, and this cardstock that I'm using, it's double-sided cardstock. It's um, coated cardstock. It's a Centura shiny, lovely stuff that Crafters Companion brought out. Um, obviously, you use what you like. Um, I just thought this piece was going spare, was the perfect size thought I'd use it. Right, the first thing I want to do is prep the board um, because the easiest thing to do is to get some stick and spray, uh, which is this one, the purple bottle or purple can, and um, put a few squirts of that onto, onto the um, board. And that's just to hold the cardstock in place when we put it on top. Um, now, I just need to leave that so that um, the propellant evaporates um, and it goes sticky. All right. And then we just put our card over the top. Now, this will fit on a standard A4 sheet. This piece that I'm using is from an A3 sheet um, cut down. So, uh, yes. It's, it's quite a good for, for using most of your cardstock. Sorry, a little swig of drink. Now, first tip, put your cardstock down on it. Um, missed your chat at the start, I hope you're okay. Caroline, I am absolutely fine, unlike um, five other people in Plymouth this week who sadly lost their lives um, to some nutter with a gun. Um, yeah, not great. But it is what it is. Um, it's quite shocking that it's on my doorstep. But what can you do? Right, let's get back to it. No more boring maudlin stuff. Right, like I said, put your cardstock so that the right side is face up so that you're going to emboss into it. Okay, um, 
I just want to find the right size embossing tool. I want one that's not too small. So this one here, um, if I hold it up to the camera, it's one of these lovely tonic ones that I've got. You could probably use the ones that Crafters Companion brought out um, for the flower forming. Um, those would work as well. Or failing that, obviously the ones that come with um, your Ultimate Pro. But I tend to like this one. Um, it's, it's kind of quite a nice size. One Another top tip is you can keep some candle wax. Sorry, I'm just gonna go and get a candle actually. Um, if you keep some candle wax, and I'm just gonna use the bottom of this candle because then I'm not using, um, ruining the top of it. He was autistic and didn't appear to be getting the mental health support he should have. Um, yeah, autistic's one, one way of putting it, mother. Um, he was a bit of a loon. I did, a term that I've I heard now um, as a result of this is incel, and it means involuntary celibacy. And I turned around to my husband and I said, that's just most teenage boys, isn't it? Um, and it's, I had no idea they had their own group. How mad is that? Right, so I'm just using the candle um, and rubbing it on the um, embossing tool just to give it a bit of slip. All right, and I'll keep the candle next to me so that I can do that some more. Now, with having it stuck down, I can lift it up and um, see where I need to go to start. Because I obviously you need to have some idea because otherwise you're just scratching around on the surface. And that's not great. And with having it, the, the um, stick underneath, it's not going to lift up everything. So you can... Just get a great feel for it as you go round. See that's come out of the... If you do come out, obviously you're on the right side. This bigger ball tool helps you to rub out your mistakes because it um, smooths the surface over. And if you just lift it up whenever you need to, just to get an idea of where you're going. Okay. and what the shape should look like. It just gives you a little bit of help to keep going. Oops. I'm just doing the pretty much the outside of this at the moment. Let's get a little bit more wax on there. You can, and I know people do, use the side of your nose, the, meant to say around here. Why did you, um, looking at the Neanderthals around here, I'm not. Dyslexic fingers. All right. So yeah, he's, um, like I said, we're not going to talk about the gunman. He doesn't deserve the airtime. He really doesn't. We need to be remembering the poor people and their families who are having to deal with this now. So now I've done the outside, I'm just going to make sure I get all of the internal lines that I need to, to make this work. And like I said, you don't have to do it as a Christmas box. You know, this is, um, it's a gift box, basically. So depending on what paper you use or cardstock you use. And don't forget, I mean, you don't have to use this coated cardstock. You can, if you go online to Crafters Companion or all sorts of other sites. There are loads and loads of um, free downloadable papers um, that you could print onto cardstock and use, you know, nice happy birthday. If you're doing it for a child, you could, um, I don't know, print um, elephants or 
just whatever you need. You can seam it to... Well, that wasn't very good, was it? Um, seam it to the child. Seam it to the person. You know, if you're doing an anniversary one, you can put all sorts of hearts or commiserations on there. Um, <laughs> There we go. And then we'll just do on this. And sometimes it does help if you just turn the board as well, which also is quite good if you've got it stuck down. Fudge. What? Why did you just say fudge, Mum? Um, you're just taunting me now. You know I love fudge. I went down on the Barbican and got um, a friend's birthday present from a lovely shop down there. Um, and I actually walked past the fudge shop and I didn't go in. I was very good. Wish I had. I love fudge. It's some um, kind of a weakness of mine. And before anybody says yes, I know I have many. Thank you. Um, right. Now, what I've just done there, you can see on this top one here, you've got lugs sticking out. And on this one, you've got some little marks. Now what we're going to do when we've cut it when we've cut it all out, uh, oh probably a suggestion what to put in it. Absolutely, yes, you could put fudge in this or jewellery. Um, speaking of which, Becca, I saw that lovely bracelet you made. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Really like that. Right. So these little lugs, uh, these lugs will fit into these bits here when it's cut out and little slits have been cut. So this is all of the marking out we need to do. Now, before you take it off, because I have made this mistake, so I'm trying to teach you um, from my mistakes, please learn. Do not take it off until you are absolutely sure you have marked everything. So give it a good look and make sure that you have not missed any of the scoring that you need to do before you take it off. You can still got two chocolate oranges. Well done. I love chocolate oranges too. Um, it's a bit of a theme. I actually just love chocolate. So now what we want to do is cut around the outer edge and then it's all folding. Um, and I'm going to do a bit of decoration as well if I get the time. It's only 2.48 so I should do. Um, so yes, we just want to cut it out. Um, unfortunately, no Blue Peter Styley here. Here's one I made earlier. You are going to have to watch. I'm sorry. Um, I never come to my lives particularly prepared. You're lucky I actually got something out. Uh, thank you. The ladies teaching were so clever in designing pieces that could be done in the time. Well, they've probably learned from experience, haven't they? Um, it's one of those things. You know, if you're going to do something that takes a long time, you either make the class longer or you find a way of shortcutting it or do something else. Now use whichever scissors you are comfortable with. Um, if you're comfortable with a small pair of scissors, absolutely use a small pair of scissors. Um, I have scissors in all sizes. Um, I just decided to pick the middle one. You can, obviously, if you are happy, use a craft knife to do this. And I know when Sarah demonstrates it on telly, I've seen her using a craft knife. Um, I am lethal with a craft knife, uh, especially on a glass catting mat, so it's probably not a good idea. Um, because you probably end up phoning for an ambulance for me before the end of the uh, line, which would be quite interesting, but, you know, let's not go there. It 
this has got a very um, snowman look about it. And speaking of which, all of the Crafters Companion CDs with their backing papers and everything, there's some lovely ones on the snowman and the snow dog one as well, which you could use. Now, it doesn't really matter where on the score line you cut out. Just try and be consistent, unlike me. Um, because obviously there is a, a thickness to this score line um, that we've put in. You may have to, and I will show you, you may have to do a little bit of um, trimming on these lugs so that they fit in the slits. But we will get to that in a minute. Okay. Right, so we have our piece cut out. Let me just get rid of some of this rubbish. I won't do a crafter's companion and flick it onto the floor because I don't have someone to clean up for me. pieces away there we go right so as you can see we now have our shape and what we want to do is before we do anything else I'm just going to try and tease these score lines in and because I've made them nice and deep I'll just get a little pair of scissors because there's a little nick there there we go all right we're just gonna score these in and give them the memory of the shape that we want them to be. Just as a start, okay? If you do it nice and gently, they will go. There you go, you can see the star forming. So it's a lovely little star box, okay? Now we can see on here, we've got our pieces where we need to cut into it. Okay, so I'm just going to get a craft knife. It's one of the few times I do use a craft knife. Like I said, I do try and avoid craft knives because me and craft knives are not best friends. And I also have to be quite careful. Yes, I did put my finger behind that and I could have stabbed myself, but I didn't. Don't worry about it. Um, it's because this craft knife's a little bit blunt. Um, I could feel it dragging against the back of the card. And the last thing I want to do is ruin the card stock. Even on the back side, I don't want to do that. I want to keep it nice. So we're just making a slit between the two marks that we put in on this half. All right, nice little slits, there we go. And then we're going to test it by obviously putting it together. Now what you can do, if the slits don't work straight away, you can actually just trim a bit of the card out. Um, but what I'm doing is just trying to push them in. There we go. Can you see those going in there? And sometimes it actually works better if you sort of like lean it to one side so that one side goes in first. Because they're um, the lugs. Now that one is a little bit big. Do you remember I said to you, you might need to trim them? So this one here just feels a little bit big. So I'm just gonna trim the outside a bit just so that it fits into the slit a little bit easier. All right. Um, there we go. That is basically the box finished. And as mum said, fudge would fit in there really nicely. Or um, some Ferrero Rocher would be lovely. You could, if you wanted, put a ribbon through so that you can hang it on a tree. Um, so it could be a really nice 
tree decoration. You could make 24 of these, fill them with sweeties, put numbers on the front, hang them off um, a, uh, a line and have them as your advent calendar. Um, I'm just throwing ideas out there, um, just ways of using it to make it all good fun. Sorry, get really thirsty chatting. Okay, so I'm just going to open it back up because I haven't finished because I did want to do a little bit more decoration on it than, than just the plain box. But I did want to do the box because people had asked, could you do a demo on that side of the um, board? And I hadn't done it before. Well, I might have done, but I can't remember. So it's always good. Um, and like I said, I can then upload it to YouTube so that people can watch it again. All of my videos are available on my Facebook um, account. It's quite scary looking at my face from last year. I have lost four stone nine and a half pounds since last year. So I look a little bit different. It's a bit scary. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the board again to do some decoration. And I really like this um, star pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, um, a matte layer. And I want some very sparkly, absolutely gorgeous um, glitter for this. Uh, is that going to be big enough? Absolutely, it's going to be big enough. Good, right, we use that. I always try and use up scrap bits. Um, it's always good. Now, there should still be enough stick on here, so what I'm going to do is stick this down and get the right ball tool. I think it was that one. And I'm going to do the outer one because this is going to be my biggest shape. Now, I've never actually embossed glitter cardstock before. So this is kind of a first for me. And I wasn't sure whether it was going to work. Hopefully, looks like it has. There we go. And I don't know whether you can see that. That's embossed that shape. Just making sure that I can see the comments. Not that there are any, you're all there um, quietly. Well, I say all, not many of you. Right, so we just cut this one out. I quite like the embossed edge on this, so I'm gonna try and keep it. She says probably cutting a bit off. It's very difficult actually to see this because as you catch it in the light it just goes really sparkly. You're awake. Well done mum. Right. So this is our sparkly layer and then I'm just going to get another piece of this um, this lovely cardstock and do a um, mat over the top. Oh, maybe not. Um, no, I'm going to get some of this because uh, the piece that I was going to use has got pencil marks on it, so I'm not going to be able to use that. So I'll just use something else. It's from the same collection, so uh, hopefully it should match in quite nicely. And we want to use the next size down on the board so that we get, and I didn't do that very well, did I? Being a bit too frugal there, I got it a bit too close to the edge, but that's fine. It will work, she says. It's going to have to do now, isn't it? Right. So just cut this one out. I 
and it's quite lovely because the stars um, on this board they don't necessarily scream Christmas do they so it's it is definitely quite multi-purpose awesome box it is an awesome box I don't know why I don't do it more often um, it's a lovely shape and it's so dead simple to do but if you put something nice inside it it's got a really good look about it in the rubbish. Let's get that one out of the way. And it's only three o'clock. Right, the one thing about this I would say is getting this to stick down to a box that curves is going to be fun. So, um, yes, it's going to take a bit of sticking. Now what I'm going to do, or try to do, is use not that one um, my dotty tape runner because I want a flexible stick and what I mean by flexible stick is not one that when it sets it's rock hard because if you go rock hard it will break once it's um, stuck down it will break and if you're making a box now that you're going to use at Christmas it's kind of got a hold together, hasn't it? So what I want to do is just make sure that this holds together. And it will do with the Dotty Tape Runner. Because I put lots on. And this should hold it in place, even when it flexes. Okay. She says, fingers crossed. Bear with, just having a drink. Let's try it, shall we? Right. It's a little bit of a faff to put the box together. And if you're putting something inside it, what I would probably do is put most of the box together and then put the item inside it. So I would put, um, you know, this bit, this bit in with great difficulty. There we go. And this bit in. Right, and then maybe this one and leave one side open like that and then put what you want inside or if you need to leave two sides open and then put what you want inside and then close it there you go now can you see they are lifting so um you might need to go for a tacky glue but obviously if I use a tacky glue um, I've got to leave it flat for ages and you're not going to get to see it so that's one of the reasons for doing it like this but I really do think if you've got some um, numbers that you can die cut out like I said bit of ribbon in the top you could have these round your Christmas tree if you've got your Christmas tree up before um, December the 1st you could have these round your Christmas tree with your advent pieces in them um, and, and, and get people to take them off the tree day by day which would be absolutely brilliant wouldn't it I don't know how you do mind you not everybody does the Christmas day one do they because um, advent calendars kind of finish at, Christ, at Christmas Eve um, but a lot of advent calendars that you buy in the shops now go up to the 25th and then they do a nice big one for the 25th I don't know why um, you know hey ho So I was just reading the comments, Mum and Becca doing their awake bit. The other thing you could do with this um, box is instead of using um, cardstock that's already patterned or printing off cardstock, you could use your um, aqua blend pens or your glitter pens and do your own um, cardstock that you then cut out. 
The cats would love those on a tree. The cats love anything on a tree, Mum. Um, but at least with these, um, you couldn't break them. Um, glass baubles, not a good idea. Um, and they're, they're not shiny baubles, so they're probably less likely to go for them. I did last year not actually put an awful lot on my Christmas tree because of the cats, because they were very little and they were a real pain in the neck with Christmas stuff. So, uh, so yes, that, that's what happened last year. Now, I actually have a couple of little snowflakes left over from last week's live. So I'm going to pop these on here as well, because I can. And I've got loads of time because it's only six minutes past three. And I've finished the box. I can't believe I've finished the box. What we could do is um, put a tag on it as well. Make a tag. That means I have to find a tag, Diane. Well, I don't have to. Actually, it'll probably be quite good to show you um, making a tag without a tag die. So, let's get a piece of cardstock. Um, trim it straight because it wasn't straight at the end. And then what am I going to do? Let's make it four inches long. That sounds good, doesn't it? Right, so we've got a piece that's four inches long by two and a quarter inches wide. Yeah? And if that's just for anybody who wants measurements. Um, I know there are some people that like their measurements. Now, I'm going to mark it. Uh, let's get a smaller embossing tool. Um, at the three inches on the edges. And I'm using the marks on, on my cutting. My guillotine. That's what it's called. It's a guillotine. Right. So I'm going to come in two should I come in two yeah half an inch on each side all right so I've got a half inch there half inch in from the top there and one inch down and all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece out in between those two marks and this is going to be your most basic tag. All right, so that is our basic tag. Now what I want to do is do a mat for it. So I'm going to do um, a glittery piece. Just make sure that that's big enough. Yes, it is. Right, so this piece was, we said four inches. So I'm going to make it four and a quarter inches okay so let's do shove that through so four and a quarter all right and it was two and a quarter inches wide so i'm going to make it two and a half inches wide yeah so i'm just making it quarter of an inch bigger all the way around Okay, now for this bit at the top, I am not going to, you know, come in in the set. Actually, can I? I should be able to, shouldn't I? Theoretically. Never normally works like that for me, though. So what I'm going to do, pop that out of the way for a minute. I'm going to use um, a ruler. I have like three million rulers, but this one has got inch measurements on it. So let's give it a go. This might not work. So what I'm going to do is come in half an inch on each side. Yeah, as I did before, but I'm doing it on the back side because it's glitter. Um, box with seven doors. Haven't seen what's in them. Seems a bit ridiculous to me, but maybe I'm a miserable kid. What? Oh, seven day advent things, thingies for birthday. Oh, no, I haven't. Ooh. I thought a birthday was one day. That seems a bit greedy for people to be uh, having an entire week. Right, before I go at cutting anything, this is me being sensible and frugal and not wanting to waste glitter cardstock. I'm going to draw the line where I will be cutting. 
and then I'm going to put my um, top on it just so that I can have a look and see whether it looks right because if it doesn't look right I'm not going to cut that actually it does well there you go you can blow me down with a feather right so we'll just trim this oops I think people are just trying to get extras for their birthday. Okay. So this kind of gives you, you know, you can see how to make a simple tag without actually having a, um, a tag die. You don't need a tag die if you haven't got one. Please don't go out spending money on something that, that actually you can make yourself fairly easily. That didn't take long, did it? It's, you know, say you, save your pennies for something that actually needs you to spend the money. Um, because otherwise you just end up spending money on stuff that you don't really need. I know, we don't need any of this stuff. You could just go out and buy a box. You could. But it's much more fun to have made it yourself. And much more unique. The number of times you'll turn up at somebody's house and they've either got three of the same card, someone's selling even more unnecessary crap. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, they've got three of the same card because everybody's shopped in Card Factory or been on to um, oh, Moon Pig is the one you know the, the, at least if you make it yourself you've got something quite unique now i need a hole punch i'll be back in a second my hole punch is hiding in a box behind me somewhere one of the many boxes behind me Proper doll. This one, this beast comes out every once in a while just for fun. Right, so I'm just going to punch a hole in it. And what we can do is punch a hole in the box so that we can um, fit this tag through. Or two holes might be better. So we're going to have to open it up again. But it's fine because the more times you open it up and close it, actually, the better and smoother it opens. Um, providing you don't go ripping it, obviously. I remember something I made for, for Crafter's Companion once. Um, and it was the, um, Debbie Robinson was, was um, showing it on telly. And... Um, she went and ripped something off one of my cards. It was like, no! Now, I'm not actually sure I'm going to be able to punch that hole because it's right in the middle and my crocodile won't do that. So let's put my crocodile away, out of the way, and we'll find another way of doing it. Stay there. Have I got... Yes, of course I've got a pokey tool. Stupid question, wasn't it, really? Um, I have got one. Next question is, where is it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in through all the layers, and I haven't got my finger right behind this, don't worry. Um, it was to one side. So now I've got the hole. I can wiggle and try and make it a bit bigger. There we go. Now, I'm trying to think of the best way of attaching this. It is fine. I'll think of it. Don't worry. I will get there. It's Sunday afternoon and the brain does not want to play properly. Right, I've got loads of satin ribbon, so we'll use a bit of this white. Okay, 
So all we're going to do is pop the ribbon through here, like so. And then we are, hmm. Now we won't end up with a bow at the top. What I'm going to try and do is poke this through the L, which is really tiny. Which is why I could have done with a bigger L, but never mind. The problem is, is if you make too big a hole, what I'm about to do in a minute won't work. Because I'm going to put a knot behind it. And if the hole's really big, the knot just goes through back and back through the hole. But if the hole's quite small, it stays in place. I don't know why, but I suddenly thought of Harry Potter then. Um, which is on this afternoon, I think. Because they've been doing Harry Potter on the telly. On a Sunday afternoon. Right. I don't know whether you all saw what I did then. Cutting it on the slant. Um, makes it a little bit easier to poke it through the hole because you've got a little pointy end. There we go. And then you can just pull it. You pull it through as far as you want so that you have as much dangling outside as you want. And then on the inside, we just tie a knot So that the ribbon can't come back through the hole and trim off the excess. We now have a nice little tag to go on a box. Right. Da, 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 da. And like I said, the more times you do this, the easier those slits are to get the um, little bits in. All right, so now we've got a nicely decorated box with a tag, all ready for something yummy or pretty for Christmas. There you go. All done. Is there anything anybody else would like to see before I... Why punch a hole? Couldn't you tie a knot in the end of the ribbon and then wrap it between the two, between two sides? Um, quite possibly, but I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Becca. I will uh, fiddle later. Um, but that was quite good. It's a different way of doing it, and it means that that tag cannot come off, which means that someone can't nick your Christmas present. Always a good idea, I find. Um, you know. Anyway, right, so failing anybody having anything else for me to do, it's 20 past three. I'm just going to take my glasses off and bring the camera down um, so that you can have a quick close up of the box. All right, so there's our pretty little box. All right, with our nice little tag, which you could decorate up, stamp on, whatever. There we go, right. Yeah. Scary, me again. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you very much. That's all right, Linda. No problem at all. Um, like I said, this one is going to be going onto YouTube as quickly as I can get it on there, um, which isn't very quickly because it takes ages to upload stuff to YouTube. Um, because a couple of people had asked for it, and I thought I might as well do it as a Sunday live as well as um, a YouTube tutorial so that people can see it. Um, but that's pretty much me for the week um yeah not a lot on at the moment i'm still trying to keep out of the way of people you know doing a couple of lateral flow tests a week just to make sure i haven't um contracted anything from anybody else and so that i'm not passing anything on to anybody else um hubby is still diseased and unwell um a constant state really um it's never fatal never mind um Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Um, he's not on. My, he's not on my Facebook. Anybody who who worries about the things I say, hubby doesn't do Facebook, um, and he's not on my Facebook. And my videos are locked down to friends only, so he's not my friend. Um, 
<laughs> I married him 29 years ago. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so yes, um, so I can say what I like. He never gets to see it. Um, and my daughter never watches my stuff, so it's fine. Not a problem. It's just you lot. <laughs> so thank you very much for keeping me slightly less insane. When can I plan the wake? Oh, yeah, we can plan it as much as we like, but until until the cat's tripping up down the stairs, nothing doing, Mum. Sorry. Um, yes. Anybody know any untraceable poisons? No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Yes. Sick sense of humour. I'm very sorry, people. OK, I shall go away now and, yeah, beat myself up very badly. Sorry. Anyway. Have a lovely week, whatever you get up to. Stay safe, everybody. Iceland do sausage rolls. I think we might have to have a chat about that afterwards. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Rach. See you next week. Yep, see you next week, Caroline. Um, anybody got any suggestions for anything they'd like me to do? Absolutely um, shout. If I can do it, I will. Um, if I can't, I'll let you know. Because um, I can't do everything. I'm not that awesome. So, yes, stay safe and I will see you all on the other side next week. Bye for now.